Good morning everyone, I hope you're well. Today we're having a look at Psalm 91 and you might notice that I've decided to go with the behind the scenes sort of set today as we film this video. That saves me a little bit of editing but also uh, I think it's quite appropriate because Psalm 91 is a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, it's, it's really a psalm that says for those who trust God you have a great hope. For those who trust God uh, you have the only possible way of having hope for this life and for the next. And it's an encouragement to trust God. But it could be read wrongly that it's a promise that if you trust God, everything will go the way you want. And that's not the way to read this psalm. Uh, have a read of it and then come back with me to verse 1. Uh, just before verse 1, the title says, The Protection of the Most High. Uh, it's an interesting title. As you read through, I wonder if that's what you thought. So it does capture a large dimension of the psalm. But it's interesting that the Greek LXX translation, so the, the sort of 150 years before Jesus translation of the Hebrew psalms, uh, it, it has a title that making this sound like it's a Davidic psalm, a psalm in praise of what God's done for David, a, a praise song by David, that kind of idea. And, and as I read it, I must say the first time I read it, I thought, this sounds like David. I mean, the circumstances of life, the way his life went, the way he trusted God and the way God responded, it sounds like David. It, it doesn't sound like our lives. Well, I don't know, maybe it does sound like your life, but, but, but not everything we've done has gone exactly the way we want. And, and then I thought, is this really a psalm about Jesus? If David is the messianic figure, could it be that this psalm is truly about Jesus and him? trusting God in all circumstances. You can come back and think about that with me at the end. Uh, but I love the way it starts. It starts with naming God in a couple of ways. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, in my God, in whom I trust. Now those are famous verses. Lots of people know those verses, verse 1 and 2. Uh, the Lord is our refuge. He's the one that we can trust. And it, and it does make you think, am I the you? Am I the person who's able to say this to the Lord? Now verse 3, he himself will deliver you from the hunter's net, from the destructive plague. He will cover you with his feathers and take refuge. You will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, the arrow that flies by day, the plague that stalks in the darkness, or the pestilence that ravages at noon. Uh, now, I don't know, you read that and you thought pestilence and you thought COVID <laughs> along the way, and you thought plague and you thought corona along the way there, uh, but it really is encouraging a believer in God to really trust God in all the really, really difficult circumstances of life. In, in battles, in war, in terror, in the dark at night, <coughs> in disease. Though a thousand, verse seven, fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, the pestilence will not reach you. You'll only see it with your eyes and witness the punishment of the wicked. Uh, and this is, it is a really idealistic picture. And that's why I thought of David, because I mean, he was a warrior who, who they sang songs about killing the thousands. Uh, around him of the wicked and the enemies of God. Then verse 9, uh, because you have made the Lord my refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no harm will come to you. For the Lord will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now, as I read that, I wonder if you then start to think, well, I mean, this sounds like it's not it's about David at this point. It sounds like it's actually about Jesus. And it was Jesus, as he was tempted by Satan, who said he could call on the angels. The, the angels could make sure that he didn't stub his toe or hurt himself or fall or anything else. He could be carried away by the angels. But yet he put his trust in the word of God. Now, verse 14 because he is lovingly devoted to me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honour. I'll satisfy him with a long life 
to show him my salvation. And I think if you read this about yourself and took it as a promise of God, you might be missing the point and the reality is you'll be disappointed for we'll all die and we'll all get sick and we'll all suffer and we'll all be victims of all sorts of circumstance. There's no promise in the New Testament from God that absolutely you trust Jesus, your life will go wonderfully and you'll live a long life and everything will go your way. That's not the promise. The promise is eternal life and eternal hope. And so we don't want to overread ourselves into this. It is written in the Old Testament. And that clue from the LXX that is written about the Messianic David is a good clue. For I think this psalm is truly about Jesus. He is the one that is lovingly devoted to God. He is the one that was truly delivered from suffering, death, and the punishment of our sins. When he cried out, the Lord answered him. And showed him salvation. And so rather than us expecting that because we trust Jesus, God will give us every bit of earthly salvation we can ever want, he'll deliver us in every circumstance. Actually, the promise is along with Jesus we will see salvation. Along with Jesus we will see a new age. Along with Jesus we won't cry, we won't have tears, for we will have the hope of life. Psalm 91 for us, really does encourage us to keep trusting Jesus, to know what we have, to be thankful for it, to keep praying to God who is in charge of all pestilences and all violence and ask for deliverance, absolutely, but not with the hope of a guaranteed promise in this life, but with the hope of a guaranteed promise of salvation from this life in Jesus. It's a great encouraging psalm, but we don't want to overread it as promises. Hope that makes sense. As we sit and look from behind the scenes, a little bit like what we're doing here today, as we look from behind the scenes, we see that God wrote his hand in history and pointed out what he was doing through our Saviour, Jesus. And Psalm 91 is helpful in that. So over to you to praise God. It's good to praise God in his various names. Most High, the Almighty, uh, you might spend some time praising God that way today, but also thanking him that there was one man truly, lovingly devoted to God, and through him we all have salvation. Praise God. Amen.